Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Helena Gazelka. Artificial intelligence and technology are becoming increasingly important parts of delivering medical care. Developments in AI are moving patient care from reactive treatment to preventative and personalized care. With us to discuss this today is Dr. John Kalantari. Dr. Kalantari is an associate consultant in the Department of Surgery and a faculty member of the Mayo Clinic Center for Individualized Medicine Microbiome Program. Now that's a mouthful. Good morning, Dr. Kalantari. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. You hear so much about artificial intelligence now. It's like the kind of a buzzword in medicine until COVID came along and became the buzzword. Can you first describe for our audience what is meant by artificial intelligence or artificial general intelligence and why is it important to us? So the concept of artificial general intelligence or AGI is in many ways considered the holy grail of the AI community. And it, and it aims to recreate some of the most important aspects of human intelligence in algorithmic form. So this ranges from techniques like one-shot learning, which is our ability to learn something from one or just a few examples, or even something like multitask or transfer learning, which is the ability that we humans have to transfer knowledge from one domain to a completely new one uh, without any practice or training. And ultimately, there's new fields like reinforcement learning and causal inference, which resemble our ability to learn from trial and error as well as learn how to better understand cause and effect relationships. And the reason why AGI or artificial general intelligence is a worthwhile pursuit is because it allows our algorithms and our computer systems to begin to reason, use strategies, make judgments under uncertainty. And this becomes especially important in domains like medicine where our knowledge is, is incomplete or there's a lack of data and which makes it difficult for traditional AI and machine learning methods to perform. I understand that you are specifically studying causal inference as it relates to AI and in cancer and in other uh, parts of medicine. I'm wondering, can you explain what is causal inference and how are these topics connected to one another? Sure, causal inference or causal AI methods they basically allow us to understand those cause and effect relationships that we see in different phenomena in biology and medicine. And we use these methods to better understand the molecular basis of cancer, for example. Because if we can understand causality and mechanism, we can better identify risk factors, therapeutic targets, and mechanisms of prevention many people quickly turn to traditional AI methods and machine learning to do just this. But most, if not all, AI methods share the same fundamental flaw. They rely on the use of correlations as opposed to uh, causation to understand mechanism. What this means is that many AI predictive models are, tra are trained to minimize prediction at all costs. And this leads us to build these black box models that absorb any and all correlations found in the data. And this inevitably includes spurious correlations, which may stem from data biases that are unrelated to the causal explanation of interest. And so for us in medicine biology, we want to get to that root cause, those root cause and effects relationships. So that will lead us to solutions. Your recent research has uh, focused on using AI and game theory to better understand evolution in colorectal cancer, which is the third most common uh, cancer in men and women. Could you tell us a little bit about the implications of the work that you're doing? We used a variation of a method known as reinforcement learning to basically reverse engineer the rules of cancer progression directly from multiomic uh, tumor data. And to do this, we basically framed cancer as this causal game of cell evolution, where the quote unquote winners of cancer are basically the subpopulations of cells found in each tumor. And so the primary aim is to use these methods from game theory uh, to learn how and why 
these distinct groupings of cells survived and thrived under different evolutionary uh, selection pressures. And naturally, no algorithm existed to handle, you know, the complexity, the heterogeneity, uh, the uncertainty that is cancer data. So we had to invent our own approaches that basically merge these, you know, very disjoint fields uh, for the purposes of understanding cancer. And so we aimed to build an AI system that could take a patient tumor, tell us how and why it occurred, which mutations were responsible for the tumor's growth, what the likelihood of metastasis recurrence is, and then ultimately make a precise recommendation of which treatments would be the most effective for this specific patient. What are some of the primary things that you found out from this work so far? In our initial studies, uh, given a set of tumors and their associated multiomic data, our algorithm is able to infer a function that basically encodes the causal mechanisms underlying tumor progression. So we ran this algorithm on a cohort of colorectal cancer tumors. And after doing this, the, the algorithm inferred a function that recapitulated the canonical model of colorectal cancer progression from scratch meaning it identified not only the set of mutations, but also correctly inferred the order in which they occurred. And as a bonus, the algorithm also uncovered several other important mutations that were less well known, uh, but were later confirmed as being critical early events of carcinogenesis. Will this work eventually help to predict who may get colorectal cancer, is it, or is it primarily after there's a tumor, you look at the tumor? That is what we're aiming for. The reason why we're looking into incorporating these causal methods is to identify those early events that could lead to metastasis or cancer uh, growth. You've recently partnered with NASA and Google Cloud in the Frontier Development Lab to build the next generation of AI algorithms for space medicine. Can you tell us a little more about this partnership and what kind of work you're doing? The Frontier Development Lab is an AI accelerator program, and it's a public-private partnership between NASA, the SETI Institute, and a few external partners, including Google Cloud, Mayo Clinic, NVIDIA, Intel, among others. And the primary goal of this eight-week program is to solve one of, one of the many moonshot challenges in AI and space medicine. So I served as the domain lead of this year's challenge which focused on long duration missions and cancer. And basically uh, the team that I mentored consisted of some of the most brilliant minds in the field of AI and machine learning around the world. And together we all worked on a project focused on building you know, these new causal inference platforms that could use multiomic data, including genetic, epigenetic, microbiome, clinical metadata, to better understand the molecular basis of cancer in order to mitigate uh, risk of prog progression. Dr. Kalantari, I've heard that term moonshot used um, by you today and in relation to other uh, studies and even uh, related to work in, on COVID while well, that's been going on. Can you explain to us what uh, you mean by the term moonshot? So by moonshot, we basically refer to any of these uh, high-risk, high-reward, long-term vision type projects that require both, uh, you know, outside-the-box thinking, as I like to say, and require us to kind of go beyond what we're comfortable with in terms of methodologies and uh, embrace that spirit of innovation. Are space medicine and AI medicine then the next kind of the next frontiers for Mayo Clinic in terms of research? Mayo Clinic has a, a deep-rooted history in aeronautics and space medicine with, you know, early research and development in, with the development of the G-suit happening here in Rochester, Minnesota. And I think space medicine and AI are the next frontiers that Mayo Clinic is in a position to be a leader in. You know, we're in active discussions with NASA on how to further develop and integrate some of this new technology that we're developing here at Mayo into an AI medical platform that can be used for, you know, risk mitigation and astronaut health forecasting, you know, and ultimately patients here on earth and astronauts in space will benefit from, you know, the clinical expertise and AI platforms that Mayo Clinic has to offer. So, you know, my goal is for Mayo Clinic to play a role in 
you know, contributing not only in upcoming Artemis missions, which is, you know, NASA's goal to send human astronauts to the moon um, by 2024, but more ambitiously, I envision Mayo Clinic continuing its legacy in space medicine and playing a pivotal role in assisting NASA in their planned human missions to Mars by 2033. The number of algorithms that computers can process is simply staggering. And many people have asked, do you think that um, people will be replaced in medicine and in research through the use of AI? At Mayo Clinic, what I hear uh, from a lot of clinicians and staff is that AI is actually going to make our jobs more efficient and, and help us in taking over those tasks that are most mundane and time consuming. So if anything, it'll actually help us in our, in our job performance and efficiency, um, taking over those laborious tasks that we never really wanted to do. We'll have an opportunity to learn more about the work that you're doing at the upcoming Virtual Center for Individualized Medicine Conference on October the 14th. Can you tell us a little bit about that conference? The IM Conference is an annual conference uh, organized by the Center for Individualized Medicine. And at this year's conference, I'll be providing a brief glimpse into our current work in AI and provide a little more detail about our use of causal inference and causal AI methods uh, for omics-based medicine. It's been a pleasure to have Dr. John Kalantari with us today talking about advances in artificial intelligence. I hope that you learned something today. I know that I did, and we wish you a wonderful day. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org, then click on podcasts. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.